Not long after the founding of this channel, we did a video featuring an experiment that saw the introduction of the human gene ARHGAP11B into a marmoset fetus's DNA, resulting in that fetus's brain doubling in size and taking on very human features, such as folding. Since then, I've read a handful of studies involving apes around the world developing the ability to use tools, foiling the traps of poachers, and now, speaking? All while I've ironically been re-watching the modern Planet of the Apes series of movies that started with Rise back in the far-off year of 2011. Oh, how simple things used to be. Today, we're going to take a look at how ape kind has slowly been changing and what that might mean for us moving forward. We'll also be looking at how these new apes films could actually become reality, but first, do the thing and like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Eric Malachi, author of Minds Horizon, and this is Science Get. In 2012, days after a young mountain gorilla in Rwanda's Volcanoes National Park was killed by a trap set by poachers, researchers witnessed something absolutely incredible. Two four-year-old gorillas actually working together to dismantle similar traps in the vicinity. Veronica Vasilio from the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund's Karasaki Research Center in Rwanda said this in relation to the observation. This is absolutely the first time we've seen juveniles doing that. I don't know of any other reports in the world of juveniles destroying snares. We are the largest database and observer of wild gorillas, so I would be very surprised if somebody else had seen that. These kinds of traps are set by the thousands by poachers, hoping to catch antelopes and other animals. Primates aren't their primary target, so young gorillas are usually caught in them by accident and left to die. The traps are set by tying a noose to a branch of bamboo stalk. The stalk is then bent down to the ground with another stick holding the noose in place. The whole thing is then covered in dry leaves and branches to obscure it from the sight of animals. The trap is triggered when an animal moves the anchoring rock or stick, causing the branch to fling back and the noose to become taut around the animal's appendage, hoisting lighter animals in the air where they can dangle. Adult gorillas are heavier, so they can usually break themselves free, but the same can't be said of their youth. Often the young gorillas caught in these traps will die from injuries sustained from trying to escape, like dislocated bones and cuts that become infected with gangrene. For this subspecies of gorillas, known as Gorilla barangay barangay, a gorilla lost is a huge deal, because they're endangered. Basilio and her team conducted a search days after a local Koryama gorilla clan lost one of its juveniles to a poacher trap. Tracker John, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce this, Nadiambie, went to dismantle one of the snares near to where the clan lives, but was stopped by the dominant male of the clan. The amazing thing is that the male was actually warning the tracker to stay away from the trap as two four-year-old gorillas ran toward the trap. One of them jumped on the bent tree branch and broke it, while the other undid the noose. The two gorillas did not stop there either. They immediately ran off to find another trap, dismantling it in the same manner. The researchers who watch this unfold think that based on the speed in which the young gorillas dismantled these traps, that they most likely learned how dangerous they were and figured out how to take them apart on their own. Now, these researchers won't be teaching other gorillas how to dismantle the traps for ethical reasons, but it's possible that this may become a tradition within this particular tribe moving forward. Don't think that this is the only surprising behavior observed in primates, though, as some species have been known to use tools. For millennia, the capuchin monkeys in Brazil's Serra de Capivara National Park have been using stone tools for a variety of purposes, including processing their food. The capuchin monkeys use stone tools to crack open seeds and nuts, but the oldest known chimpanzee site, Cote de Ivor, features evidence that tool use has been varied over time, suggesting that monkeys have been adapting their tool use in efforts to eat harder foods. But they're not alone, as great apes no, computer, not that one. Great apes have been observed making and using tools to hunt mammals. Wild chimpanzees have been observed over the years to use spears to hunt small primates called lesser bush babies at least 22 times. 
The spear in question is a modified branch broken off at the ends. The chimps often use their teeth to sharpen the stick to a point. The chimps then stab them into the hollows of tree trunks where bush babies sleep, which is kind of sad and also horrifying, but humans have done far worse, haven't we? After stabbing the spear into the tree trunk, the chimps are observed withdrawing the tool, sniffing or licking it, and then stabbing it into the trunk once more. Researchers reported that on one occasion, they witnessed a chimp withdrawing an impaled bush baby, tearing it apart and eating it. Jane Goodall observed chimps using sticks to fish termites out of mounds in the 1960s. And Stanford's research has shown how effective chimps are at hunting colobus monkeys. What's more is that the hunters of this species are predominantly female. Chimpanzees are humanity's closest living relative, which some researchers suggest could offer clues about how early evolving humans might have behaved in our distant past. In fact, there has been some debate over whether or not ape kind might be entering into their own version of a Stone Age. One has to be seriously careful when researching things like this, as media headlines and over-eager researchers will often make claims that don't necessarily stand up under scrutiny. Many news outlets have reported, for example, that apes have entered a quote-unquote stone age of their own. But what exactly does that mean? There are species of birds who use tools, even stone ones, to crack open hard-shelled foods. And dolphins are intelligent enough to use starfish as tools when they look for food, protecting their noses. But this doesn't necessarily mean that they've entered the equivalent of our Stone Age. While it definitely is true that some species of apes do use tools and demonstrate a limited sense of self, it's difficult to tell whether or not they're actually progressing in intelligence. Remember the marmoset experiment we mentioned earlier? In that video, we mentioned that scientists replaced the ARHGAP11A gene with its human counterpart, ARHGAP11B. ARHGAP11B contains 47 amino acids that are specific to humans. These amino acids are not present in ARHGAP11A, which is found in chimpanzees, suggesting that ARHGAP11B is responsible for the development of larger brains in modern humans and our extinct cousins, the Neanderthals. The results of this 2016 study have led scientists at the Max Planck Institute to perform a controversial gene edit on a marmoset embryo, resulting in a fetus with a much larger neocortex than it originally had. Not only that, but the brain of the marmoset fetus also doubled in size and experienced human-like folding. Now, while apes do indeed use simple tools, some researchers suggest that ape intelligence has simply plateaued. For example, our earlier example of chimps using quote-unquote spears has been called into question, as the skewering of a bush baby was only observed on one occasion, which hardly establishes a pattern. And this kind of highlights an issue with how we think of animal intelligence. We're always looking to see our own nature reflected back at us in the process. Chimps might share 99% of our DNA, but they're still very different from us at this stage, and there's no telling how they will continue to evolve. But as for the question of whether or not apes could at some point rise up and conquer the world like in the Planet of the Apes films, the answer is... Maybe? We don't know what kind of intelligence that marmoset fetus would have displayed, but if that experiment resulted in it showing human-like problem solving and perhaps even sentience, a scenario like what those famous movies displayed could potentially happen. The movies, for example, show the process of a virus wiping most of humanity out and reducing our intelligence to primitive levels. While the latter part really isn't all that likely, especially considering that the very virus that strips humanity of its intelligence and wipes them out is also the thing that boosts ape kind's intelligence. But there are many ways that human civilization could collapse, including pandemics, nuclear Armageddon, and a whole host of other existential risks that I wrote about in an older Top Tens video. Check that out in the video description if you want more reasons to not sleep at night. But one thing that is certainly interesting is that some researchers actually think that monkeys are speech ready. In 2016, researchers proved this by using x-ray photographs to construct a simulation of ape quote-unquote vocal cords, creating this haunting vocal production. Yikes. But while monkeys do have a capability for speech, and many of them can learn simple sign language, it's curious to note that those skills aren't taught to other apes, suggesting that apes really only see these skills as useful in communicating with humans. So basically, if Planet of the Apes does become a reality, I think it will come as a result of us wiping ourselves out and opening up an evolutionary niche for the apes to fill, which is, I guess, kind of what happens in the movies in a way. 
If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment down below whether you think apes will one day rise up to conquer the earth. And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show. Oh, and be sure to check out the Patreon too. Speaking of which, check out all those names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.